Hey guys, good to see you or be seen by you. It's lovely to be a part of this thing. We're in Mark chapter 11. We're talking about the entry of Jesus to Jerusalem. And on the way there, Jesus has some incredibly interesting events. He stops at the temple when he gets to Jerusalem. This is the place where all the sacrifices were going to be made. And as they were making preparation for people to get their sacrifices, everybody was in for a quick buck. Let's make a quick buck out of somebody else's need. That freaked Jesus out. And Jesus' righteous anger and his righteous indignation rose up. He threw them out of the temple. He took a whip and he gave them a hiding. And he, he said this to them. Let me read it to you. Jesus said this. He said, It is written, is it not written? My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. But you have made it a den of robbers. I would hate for a church to be thought that it's a den of robbers, wouldn't you? And yet when I see some of the things that happen in the name of church, I wonder if he wouldn't say the same thing about many churches today. Anybody in church leadership needs to make sure they check their heart on the issue of giving and of money. We don't very often talk about it in our church because it, it can become a whole lot bigger than it needs to be. Our fact is that we want to trust God and God has blessed us with some generous people who make it work for us and extend the kingdom because they have the gift of generosity. But it's not the, the, the end game. It's a means to another end. And while it is that, then finance and, and getting money to be able to do the things the church needs to do is a great thing. But here's the issue. The house of prayer is great terminology. I need to ask you today, the house of prayer, what are the alternatives? First of all, this house of prayer could become a house of entertainment. And sadly today, in many places, that's what it has become. Where people will go to a particular church and you say, well, why do you go? And I say, man, it's just good. The music is great. And it gives me goosebumps. And I feel all that good stuff in, my, in myself. And, and it just makes you feel good about myself. Well, church is not made there to feel you, make you feel good, people. It's there to serve the purpose of God, to extend His kingdom. And sometimes that's darn uncomfortable. But when we look at what our church is, it, it certainly should not be a, a place of entertainment. And, and, I, and I, I, I'm sad when I, I think that people may, may come because of that reason. But I have nothing against people who do worship well and people who use their gifts and their talents with pure motive to glorify God. And as God smiles upon the worship team or whatever, they know that there's a fine line between entertainment and the real deal. So let's be careful of that whole thing. But only when those things happen do we need to address them. While they're, they're, the motive of the, your team is doing well, then let them rip, rip, let them go, and let them do what they need to do to express themselves by using the great talent God has given. But at the same time, this house of prayer is not just a house of fun either. I have nothing against fun. In fact, I, I like fun. But you don't go to church for fun. You don't go to services for the sake of meeting your buddies there. And even though you do have an element of those things, those are nothing, there's nothing wrong with those things. But when they become the main thing, then you know you're in trouble. God's house is a house of prayer for all nations. I find it so sad to say, see some churches that would say our house is a house of prayer for this particular nation you know if you're of another color group then then we got a church down the road that we can recommend to you god hates that i've got to tell you there's no place for that in the kingdom of god and when we start to segregate and polarize people this is this is the church for those of a political party you know <laughs> god's not interested in your political party people he has no interest in that at all because he's god and when we polarize the church over the things that actually mean at the end of the day nothing at all, or at least very little, we miss the point of God's house. It's a place of repentance. It's a place of becoming honest with yourself and integritous with God and showing God that you're serious about sin. You want to deal with those issues and you will call that sin out. And I'm so glad to be associated with some churches that do that. And I, I think I applaud them. I think some of the things they, they confront are incredibly courageous. People want to draw a crowd. 
People think that we measure success in the church by how many people come. I don't, I don't buy that either. It's nice to have people that come to church. I don't deny that. But if the only reason they come is because they're being entertained, you know you're in trouble. So let's get our acts together. Those who attend a church, let's make sure that we don't go to that church, particularly because it's the, the great entertainment place. This is the place to be. This is the place I get goosebumps. Ah, I don't go to that church like, for that reason. Even if it does give you, which is a good thing, that's not a good enough reason to be there. But we only have to ask God to break our hearts. And uh, by prayer, he does that. Do you remember the story of the that uh, Jesus told of the tax collector and uh, and the the guy the, the Pharisee Pharisee came to church he, he was into entertainment boy best dressed his face was full of powder and and dust from the, the smoke and the fire because he had been fasting it was a place to put on a show it was a place to be extravagant and showing people what a good guy he was and Jesus drew a comparison to the guy sitting in the corner who he said couldn't even lift his eyes to heaven but beat upon his chest and said God have mercy upon me because I'm a sinner and Jesus says who do you think left the church well fulfilled that day and the crowd knew what he was saying the Pharisees were great entertainers there were some articulate preachers and speakers there was great music but that didn't cut it for Jesus so let's make sure our intention is good our motive is good and let's make sure that this is a house of prayer for all nations. That's tough because birds of a feather do flock together. We know that. But man, we've got to make room for one another. When you get that right, there's no greater joy than finding that place. Man, I love that stuff. You're going to have a good day. And I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye, people.